Hello, my name is Gonzalo Abad and in this video tutorial we are going to see how to implement the wind turbine model based on WFET induction generator and we will do it in MATLAB Simulink. All the theory and information related to this topic can be found on this book, WFET induction machine modeling and control for wind energy generation at the, chain, at the Chinese an English version edited by Wiley. Okay, so if we go to chapter one of that book, we can see or we can find the first chapter, which is the introduction to a wind energy generation system. If we go to page 12, if I'm not wrong, here we can see the aerodynamic model, a basic aerodynamic model of a three blade wind turbine. Here we have the basic equations that we need in order to implement a very simple model of the uh, wind turbine based on a three blade, the typical wind turbine that we can find in our mountains. Okay, so first of all, we will need MATLAB Simulink. And here we have the program. We will continue with the Simulink program that we have uh, used in previous tutorials. Let's wait a little bit. Here we have the program. And we will need to, based on these model equations of the wind turbine, implement this model into this Simulink uh, program. Before doing that, let's have a look of one initialization program that I have already prepared, in which I have included the three-blade wind turbine model here we have the gearbox radio, the radio of the blades, 42 meters, the air density. Here with this sample, simple uh, four routine or four loop, I have created the CT uh, curve in function of lambda, lambda which is implemented according to these formulas and finally also I have include the power in function of the wind speed curves of this uh, wind turbine which is a 2.4 megawatts wind turbine and here we have the plots So this is the new part of the model. If we run this program, here we can see in function of lambda, the CT coefficient, the torque coefficient, and here we have the power in function of wind speed curve of this specific three blades wind turbine. And this is basically what we need to implement in order to get the model. So once we have the initialization program uh, already ready, we have already opened the program. Yes, here it is. So here we need to include the model of the wind turbine of the three blades. Just remember that this was a constant, so now we don't need this constant. And I have already prepared as well in this file, which is a library, the wind turbine model. We will copy it from here. 
and we will include it in our model. Here it is. We can do it smaller. We can make a little bit of a space. Here we have the model. And as input of the wind turbine model, we will have the wind speed, which in this case, let's have a look again, of the typical wind speed uh, working conditions for this wind turbine. Let's put, for instance, one wind speed somewhere here, which is, for instance, 8 meters per second, somewhere there. OK, so that's 8. That will be the input, wind speed. That's it. And let's have a look at what we have at the wind speed of the wind turbine model. Here is one of the inputs external inputs and internally let's put the program here again internally first of all we need to calculate the lambda uh, that is given by this formula so we need the rotational speed omega m we need the wind speed and we need also the radio just keep in mind that this uh, wind turbine model is uh, referred to the low uh, speed shaft so we need to take into consideration the gearbox ratio that in this case is 100 okay once we have lambda calculated we can use we can index to the CT to the torque coefficient that was created here this is the value and once we have both CT and lambda I'm sorry Yes, and with the speed, once we have those two variables, we can implement this simple uh, and basic formula that gives us the torque uh, produced by the three blades. Then we multiply again uh, by, we divide again by the gearbox radio in order to get the torque made by the wind turbine but in the high speed shaft and we need to multiply as well by minus one because we are using a motor convention and the wind turbine is going to be uh, to operate at uh, generator convention so this is the model that we have already connected there okay so once we have the model created and already implemented at the wind turbine sorry at the at the simulink model what we need to do now is the control strategy more specifically the maximum power point tracking control strategy uh, for the WFIT induction generator. If we go to the book, in a, if I know wrong, to page 20, there we can find several uh, control strategies, several maximum power point tracking strategies but we will implement just this one that probably is the most simplest one which is called the undirected 
speed control strategy. And basically what we need to do is measure the speed, make the square of that speed, multiply it by the optimum uh, constant, and then that becomes the torque reference. We won't include this term because at this case we are using a very small value of uh, let's put it here of a very small value of damping coefficient of the mechanical system so the only part the dominant part will be this one and this is the undirected control strategy speed control the undirected speed control strategy that constant is implemented according to this formula which is here here is the mechanical or the mathematical uh, development of this formula so we have already here and for this wind turbine it's a value of like this okay so let's implement this element this control strategy and we will include within inside the control strategy itself since now we are using an undirected speed control we are going to implement an undirected speed control we don't need the speed uh, pi controller anymore so this is not useful and we will need for instance yes let's take from here for instance one function like this we can make a group control G and this is going to be our maximum power point tracking control as input we need omega M and as output is going to be TM torque reference we need to first of all for instance let's put it there so this is not useful anymore this is our new undated speed control this is going to be the torque reference we can make it a little bit bigger paste convert to the low speed shot all this theory all this mathematical development is related to the low speed shot therefore we need to use the gearbox ratio then we need to do u1 by sorry u1 calculate the square mm. U. this is then we need to multiply by the optimal uh, constant that we have defined it according to this this is the value then again 
we need to convert it to the high speed shot by using the gearbox ratio uh, and just keep in mind that that must be negative because we are working with a generator with a machine with motor convention that is going to be working as a generator therefore this torque reference should be negative so that's it okay we could use switch just in case we need to use again the PA controller for the speed and that will be let's try to find it by the fastest way no mm -hmm. Maybe here. Maybe here, yes. Let's put there. A manual switch. And let's put it, let's make a little bit of a space and let's put it there So the torque reference is going to be always there. And that is the torque. So more or less like this. So if I'm not wrong, we have already created the system the control system with its ma maximum power point tracking curve uh, control algorithm and direct version and with the wind turbine model okay so we don't need this anymore let's wait okay save okay so now everything is ready to start simulating let's have a look first of the initialization program let's put it there yes in order to do the simulation faster we are going to, the re to reduce the inertia of the system of the mechanical system uh, to the middle in order to perform faster simulations in reality this wind turbine model should have even more uh, inertia than this value but in order to don't wait too much on the simulations let's work with this uh, reduced value of inertia here we have everything okay so we have initialized again just in case we start with eight meters per second of wind speed and we can start the simulation just keep in mind that the startup of this uh, system of this wind turbine system based on the w15 Lutheum generator should be made in reality differently to what we are doing here now we cannot directly connect this stator to the machine but in order to do things simpler we have started all the things uh, at the same time there has been a big transient uh, current and torque but anyway just for just forget about this forget about this uh, startup 
So we will focus only on the steady state. This is the speed. Sorry, I'm going to do something which is at this monitoring. Since we are not using the speed reference anymore, I'm going to take it out from there. Let's do it in this way, for instance. Otherwise, it will be always there, and as we are not using the speed reference, it has not too much sense. So now, the only speed that we are watching is the actual speed, omega m, in radians per second mechanicals. Here we can see how the torque is moving. And accordingly, the IQ current is moving as well. Here we can see more oscillations at the torque, and this is because of the fact that we have reduced the inertia. It was, it was here. If we put bigger inertia, it will work as a damper for these oscillations. But anyway, we haven't reached the steady state yet. This is the speed. It seems to be uh, subsynchronous speed. Negative torque. And just keep in mind that we are somewhere here. We are somewhere here, more specifically at 8 meters per second. Somewhere there. Okay. Somewhere there. Okay, now it seems that we are almost at a steady state, not yet, but the speed is still increasing, mainly due to this maximum power point tracking. But the torque and the speed now are, let's say, at a steady state. So now, Let's do an increase, let's simulate an increase of the window speed, for instance, from 10 meters per second to 10 meters per second. So we will go from somewhere here to this point. And 10 meters per second will mean that we are generating 1.5 megawatts. So let's simulate a very strong wind variation. Not that won't really happen in reality, but we are working with a very ideal uh, wind turbine model, so it doesn't really matter. This is a simple version. This is a first step analysis. We can see how the uh, rotational speed is increasing. Now we have we are moving from subsynchronous speed to hypersynchronous speed. The torque is going down and the speed is going up. Therefore, the power, the generated power, should be increasing as well to one point near to the 1.55 megawatts. Let's wait a little bit, almost at a steady state. Not 
yet. Just this speed uh, mm, dynamic performance depends on the inertia that we have uh, included in our system. That in our case is quite small. Just keep in mind that this maximum power point tracking uh, control, speed control algorithm is an undirected speed control. Okay, so more or less here we are. Let's stop and let's check the simulation that we have already performed. So the steady state, so this was the transient, we forget the startup transient, we forget about what has happened, and we just focus on here. This is the speed performance, here we have 8 meters per second of wind speed, and here at the steady state we have 10 meters per second. Well, here is the step. And there we have the torque evolution. There we have the corresponding IQ current evolution. Something like this. ID current is always controlled to zero. We are magnetizing the generator through the stator. There we can see the stator currents and there we can see more or less the rotor currents. And then the corresponding D and Q voltages for the rotor side. So, yes, if we go there, if we multiply, for instance, this torque, which is somewhere there, 5,600, more or less, multiplied by this speed, somewhere like... there. This is the generated power, which is at 8 meters per second. More or less this value. More or less we could say this value. Okay. So everything is correct, and if we check the last point, the steady state at 10 meters per second, let's wait a little bit, let's go to the last part of the simulation. Just be patient. Sorry. There we are. So let's have a look at this point. We were not at the steady state, fully at the steady state, but anyway, more or less. There we have, let's say, something like this for the torque and for the speed we could say that we have something like this and therefore we have a generated power 
which is at 10 meters per second of wind test speed, somewhere like 1.5 megawatts, which is correct as well. We got you. We have two viewers. And then also we can see the stator currents and the low of or 50 years frequency voltages and currents. And then we have them. Well, and we can see that that was all. Just keep in mind that we have used a very simple wind turbine model, which is a steady state model, but we are making work at uh, a transient, at dynamically, which is a simplest uh, uh, approach. And then we have used a maximum power point tracking algorithm, uh, which is an undirect, which is based on an undirect speed control. This is a very simple way of doing the NPPT uh, control. There are several alternatives, there are several ways to do it, but this is just one of them. So that was all. I hope it was interesting and useful for you. Thank you for your attention.